<laughs> All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is here, and we are in. And this is the last time we'll be in Spain. We're we're just on the border of Spain and France here. Ah, it's been beautiful. Spain is wow. Spain is very beautiful. It is exactly how I imagined it. To be completely honest, from you know watching movies. All right, I'm trying to get a get us a job over here on um, Neofly. I, I really want this job, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that. Just the, with the weight requirement. Yeah, that one will work, though. LD, uh, LDFM. Let's see if we can find another one on LDFM. Okay, it says we can take it now. 2,286 pounds. Good day to you, pilot. The flight plan has now been signed off. As soon as all the cargo is safely on board, you can get on your way. 2,200. All right. The ground crew are loading the cargo. Stand by. All right. So that does leave us some space for fuel. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Transporter. Cargo is loaded. You can start your mission. So today today should be beautiful as well. Um going around the northern coast of Spain, up the coast. We'll do up the coast and then we'll cut over to L F D M. Alright, let's see if this baby starts back up. Take a look around real quick. Where we're at very pretty area. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. We're at the corner there in Spain, right? As soon as we turn this corner, we're basically back into France. All right, and that's the the, the course we're taking now. I'd kind of checked it out earlier, so I'd set up a flight plan, which I'd hoped to get us up there. And I was lucky I got us right to where I wanted to go, LFDM. So that is the route right now. Okay, we'll sit back. Remember, you're always the uh, VIP on these flights. And um, smoker friendly. And here we go. Do some nice sightseeing today. I don't want to lift off too fast. Have a safe journey, pilot. That's some load you have there. Something weird about the way she says that. Hello, hello, how are you today? One moment here. Let me get my uh, plane into autopilot and doing its thing, and then I can say hello properly. Okay. Autopilot, nav. Uh, enter, enter. All right, and let's look around here. Probably want to go to at least. 3,000 feet. Set it for flight level change. Just pull back a tiny bit. Red line in the engine a little bit much. All right. That's nice. Okay. Where's our plane? I can hear it. Let me reset the camera. Sounds like a lawnmower from here. There we go. Good 
good that's working all right so this is where we are in spain and let's see if there's any audio tours that yeah there's several right here so that's the airport here is something out here Palacio de Deportes de Santander is an arena in Santander, Cantabria, Spain. It is primarily used for basketball and handball. The arena has 6,000 seats. In we should be able to see that. In various sporting events, it is also the venue for numerous concerts organized by the Santander City Council, among other activities and celebrations. The building has a concrete structure and a metal roof made of 400 stainless steel sheets of different sizes. Approximately a third of the circular grandstands are retractable, while the rest is made up of prefabricated concrete elements attached to beams cast in situ. Is... The Bay of Santander is both a comarca yeah. of Cantabria and the largest estuary on the north coast of Spain, with an extension of 22.42 square kilometers. Due to the influence of Santander and its metropolitan area, nearly half of the population of the autonomous community of Cantabria is gathered around it, which makes the anthropic pressure on this area of water quite notable. The entrance to the bay is lined by the Sardinero beaches, where the Isle of Moru with its lighthouse can be found. Mo. The access to its interior is through a narrow channel of water between the Magdalena Peninsula, near to which are the And, and the sandbanks of the, a long series of beaches and dunes that protect the tranquil inner waters of the bay. The morphology of the bay has suffered important changes in the last centuries. It is estimated that more than 50% of the original extension has been filled up, drying up a large amount of marsh area for grasslands, to expand the, and to create new industrial and residential areas. At the moment, work is going on to recover the seaside ecosystem in some areas of high ecological value. Several rivers empty into the Bay of Santander. The most important is the Rio de Solia, in the south. The Rio de San Salvador empties in the center of the bay via the Rio de Astillero while in the east flow the rios of Carmen and Reyes, to the west is the Rio de Cubas, which is the mouth of the Mira River. The Santander Bay is formed by a diaper generated during the alpinotype orogeny of the tertiary period. Its materials are composed of clays and salts that ascended taking advantage of the faults. This movement generated an increase of the fracturing and an important dragging of rocks from the outer layers. The weakness zone generated by the Kuiper's clays made easier its erosion compared with other sandstone or limestone areas, which involved the advance of the sea and the formation of the bay. All right, it looks like that building isn't visualized in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We just see the ground texture for it. All right, coming up ahead... All right, so that was the bay. And there's a lighthouse out there, which we might be passing. Opposite the coast of the city of Santander in northern Spain, located on the rocky island of the same name, is the Moru Lighthouse, contrasting the impressive waves of the Cantabrian Sea since 1860. Moru Island, originally Mogro Island, is Mogro. a small uninhabited island in the Bay of Biscay, located off the Magdalena Peninsula. It lies close to the entrance to the Bay of Santander near the city of Santander, Cantabria along the north coast of Spain. The island is approximately 2 hectares and lies about 0.75 kilometers from the entrance to the harbor. Ob I can't wait for update 15, man, or madam. Uh, update 15, they're going to introduce a taste of what they're saying, a taste of the memory, the new memory uh, programming, how the simulator uses memory and yada, yada, yada. And everybody said it's running fantastic. It's running smooth. It's way better frames. And I'm hoping that means you can uh, 
also increase the uh, the graphics levels. Okay, we're getting ready to turn. It's getting ready to hook up with the GPS right about now. GPS and modern avionics, man. Just so cool. Well, I think it is. Come on. You're going to turn. If it's not, I've... Oh, there we go. Come on. I, uh... I loved learning how to use steam gauges, and I've loved learning how... Uh, people of the past had to learn how to navigate. And I'm glad I know how to do it. But I don't envy them. People of the past having... Uh, but before VOR, even. Before, really, we had radio navigation, you basically were just... Everything was visual flight rules. So, thank goodness for the invention of... Uh, you know, radios and that kind of technology that allowed radio navigation, but um, we still have flaps up. There we go. But, uh, man, the this modern avionics and autopilots and what they, they call these glass cockpits. So if you hear that term glass cockpit, you know, they're not referring to your windshield. Uh, your, uh, yeah. They're, um... They're referring to basically like just your monitors, digital digital monitors. And these already look kind of these almost already look a little bit outdated compared to you know more modern touch screen stuff. And uh but it's advancing really quickly and these are just so powerful. There's so much you can do with them. Yeah, let me take a look outside. We're at 3,000 feet. Okay, so 3,000 feet. Pull back on the engine a tiny bit. Don't want to redline anything. And we also don't need full power to the propeller. So bring that down to minimum. Separator in. Landing lights off. Beacons on, nav lights on, strobes on. The Vizcaya Bridge is a transporter bridge that links right. the towns of Portugalete and Las Arenas in the Biscay province of Spain, crossing the mouth of the Nervian River. Peep. The port of Bilbao is located Bilbao. on the Bilbao Abra Bay and along the estuary of Bilbao, in Biscay. The main facilities are in the Santurzi and Zabina municipalities, approximately 15 kilometers west of Bilbao. Also called Exterior Port and Superpart 2, the port complex occupies 3.13 SQKM of land and 16.94 SQKM of water along 17 kilometers of waterfront. The container volume was over half a million teos in year 2007. Bilbao British Cemetery is located in Sondica, in the province of Biscay, in the autonomous community of the Basque Country, northern Spain. The British Cemetery was originally located on the coast of Biscay from about 1775, before being disaffected and relocated to its current position in 1929. The cemetery contains a Commonwealth War Graves plot with 58 casualties, many reburials from other cemeteries in the region where permanent maintenance could not be assured. These casualties include servicemen from Poland, as well as persons from the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth of Nations. Service personnel from both the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force are buried here. 
Most of the dead are from World War II. There are also four graves and three special memorials of British service personnel of World War I. Oh, all right, that's kind of sad. There was a big, there's a Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, and there's a interesting bridge over there, and then there was this big battle here. I think that's re related to this cemetery she's talking about. Maybe, let's find out. The Battle of Bilbao, part of the war in the North and the Spanish Civil War, saw the Nationalist Army capture Bilbao and the rest of the Basque country that was still being held by the Republic. Background. Bilbao was the capital of the autonomous Basque area established by the Republic after the war began to reward Basque nationalist support of the Republic. The Basque people in Spain generally inhabit four provinces, Navarre, Alava, Guipuscoa, and Biscay. The Basque nationalists were dominant in the last two provinces. Navarre and Alava had rallied to the rising against the Republic. The Spanish nationalist troops gained Guipuscoa early in the war with the fall of Arun in August and San Sebastian on the 13th of September. Why would they destroy a republic? I don't get it. Basque country and the zone held by the Northern Republicans from the French border. On the 31st of March, the nationalists, led by the general Emilio Mola, launched an offensive against Biscay province. The Basque troops had to retire, and by June, the nationalists had reached the outskirts of Bilbao. Battle. By the 11th of June 1937 the Basque forces had fallen back to the city of Bilbao, which was defended by a series of rushed fortifications called the Bilbao's Iron Ring. It was poorly designed for defense. It was quite an antiquated concept, akin to First World War fortifications, and so was vulnerable to modern warfare and weapons, such as aircraft and artillery, and only 30,000 troops were defending it. Therefore, the Iron Ring was rather easily overcome by nationalist forces. The ring was breached by an infantry assault supported by heavy air and artillery bombardment. On the 12th of June, the Spanish Republican Army launched a diversionary attack against Wesker to stop the nationalist offensive, but the nationalist troops continued their advance. On the night of the 13th of June, the defenders evacuated most of the civilian population from the city. On the 18th of June, General Alibari withdrew his remaining troops from Bilbao, and the nationalists occupied the city. Oh, Guernica. Pablo Picasso painted uh, a painting about the Battle of Guernica. The bombing of Guernica. Guernica is a town in the province of Biscay, in the autonomous community of the Basque country, Spain. The town of Guernica is one part of the municipality of Guernica Lumo, whose population is 16,224 as of 2009. Guernica is best known both as the scene of the April 26, 1937 bombing of Guernica, mm -hmm. one of the first aerial bombings, and as the inspiration for Pablo Picasso's painting Guernica, depicting the effects of that outrage. According to official Basque figures, 1,654 civilians were killed, but German sources report a round figure of 300 civilians killed in the bombing, according to the German Bundeswehr magazine. The raid was requested by Francisco Franco to aid in his overthrowing the Basque government and the Spanish Republican government. The bombing of Guernica, which went on continuously for three hours, is considered the beginning of the Luftwaffe doctrine of terror bombing civilian targets in order to demoralize the enemy.
I'm praying the way that they're rewriting the 2024 engine for Microsoft Flight Simulator, that they, I mean, they've already pioneered so much new ground with this simulator and what, what it can do. But I'm hoping the next generation is now being able to tie different gaming experiences into one thing. Meaning, I would like to be able to land my plane at an airport. And golfing is big. They, all the golf courses, right? And now Microsoft used to have Microsoft Golf. They used to release uh, Microsoft Golf with every new version of the uh, operating system. And like Simulator, they stopped making it. And there are those of us out there with love for Microsoft to return to also making Microsoft Golf. But now, using Will Wright's idea of that they can all share data sets and all work together in some way, that when you land your plane, you can uh, play nine or 18 holes at whatever golf course is nearby. Or the ground, you know, with the detail that they're hopefully able to get on, on the ground now. Other ground activities. So you're flying, you know, to go do things. And again, the landmarks are going to be better. And, uh, you know, um, <laughs> there's just so much that is possible. I know that may seem a little bit silly. But after you put in, you know... 3,000 or more hours of flying, you know, it is fun to want to go do other things. Plus, multiplayer, you know, fly with your friends. Let's go fly to Pebble Beach, play some golf out there. When the plane makes its a sharp turn to the right, we'll be heading towards our destination, find out where we're at. Man, we are not even. See, that's, on a, that's built on the golf course. So yeah, it'd be nice if you if you bought both titles, if you bought Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and you bought the new Golf, that you can play them separately, or you know if you're inclined, you can link them, and they'll they'll work together. So you can transition from Simulator over to Golf and then back to Simulator in a very gamey way. Manor Lords is coming out in August 26th. So I need to finish up Baldur's Gate and Rome. 
Because August 26th, I would like to, if I can pre-order it or whatever, I would like to get Manor Lords. Now, Manor Lords is a city builder, but it also is supposed to have a combat similar to Rome Total War, the Total War series, any of the Total War games, so where you can control all your troops. That's neat. Go ahead and put the propeller back in for maximum power. Let's slow down. Down to flap range. Chateau de Lanquise is located in the town of Lanquise in the French department of Dordogne. It dates from the 15th and 16th centuries and it was classified as a historical monument in July 1942 and September 2010. Built in the purple Perigord region, or Perigord port, the Battle of Bergerac was fought between Anglo-Gascon and French forces at the town of Bergerac in Gascony in August 1345 during the Hundred Years' War. In early 1345 Edward III of England decided to launch a major attack on the French from the north, while sending smaller forces to Brittany and Gascony, the latter being both economically important to the English war effort and the proximate cause of the war. The French focused on the threat to northern France, leaving comparatively small forces in the southwest. Henry of Grossmont, Earl of Derby arrived in Gascony in August, and breaking with the previous policy of cautious advance, struck directly at the largest French concentration, at Bergerac. He surprised and defeated the French forces, under Bertrand I of Lille Jordan and Henri de Montigny. The French suffered heavy casualties and the loss of the town, a significant strategic setback. Along with the Battle of Oberush later in the year, it marked a change in the military balance of power in the region. It was the first of a series of victories which would lead to Henry of Derby being called one of the best warriors in the world by a contemporary chronicler. Well, that'd be a cool... That'd be an amazing title to have. We have touchdown. Welcome. Please vacate the runway and proceed to parking. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. Okay. And we want to get paid. So... Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot.
All right. Transporter from dispatch. Hey, the cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. Ready for engine start. All right, let's put some fuel in. Uh, I think we're going to stop here. Nine hundred and twenty nine pounds, four hundred and twenty eight dollars. See what they're buying and selling here. They're selling beer. Let's look up the coastways for tomorrow. Let's see if uh, I don't know how far we could make it tomorrow. Probably at least up to here. Let's just check this place out. L F R Z. Compared to current. Okay. So if we buy fuel here at 720, they'll buy it. That's not right. 101. Okay, we can buy it for 101 a unit, and they'll buy it for 582. So we can make 572 dollars. It's one way. Check this market out. 299 on beer. And 18 on vegetables. Two forty-three on beer. I'm looking for one that's like, oh my god, we absolutely need everything and pay you through the nose for it. That'd be nice. Yeah, like this. One thousand six hundred and twenty-eight per unit. So we're so sell they're they're selling mechanical. Parts here for ten thousand one hundred and twenty. Buying them for eleven thousand seven hundred and forty eight. So if you can't find a job out of the way that you're, or whatever you're trying to find going the way that you want to go, uh, you can always play the market. So this world tour has been a blast, man started in germany and went and did the whole route of alexander the great taking us almost all the way out into the heart of india and then all the way back over here all through egypt and then back up through greece and then crossing over italy and doing the rome and following this coast all the way along the mediterranean all the way around spain now and being here been a lot of fun so we're gonna be going up to uh, keep this should get go download the uh, the UK pack but man we're definitely gonna get into the look at how many dots are on the board again now I need to get the, the UK and Ireland world updates i don't normally load the world updates because i haven't been flying over here so probably just keep going this way around these coasts and then probably up through here after that maybe we'll swing back down in here and go back to germany Be a long, that's gonna be a long flying to get to Moscow and then covering all the way over into China to Japan. That's gonna be definitely a, a long stretch. All right. So 
So, thank you for tuning in. We'll do it again. Pick it up here tomorrow. And I'm off to get set up. Well, I'll stretch a little bit, do some things around here, and get the cover art ready and get ready to go for Rome Total War. Turn that off. Put that up. There we go. That's proper.